Praise the Lord, young people. Tonight we'll be coming to you bringing our ALBM Youth Chat, our Bible lessons, our books of the Bible, memory verse, and uh, the lesson. Uh, before we get started, let's all bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you. Thank you all for tonight. Lord, you're just going to take for everyone tuning in, all the young people, uh, that they will uh, take time to hear your word and may it find a lodging place in their hearts. Lord, would you hide the teachers behind the cross so it'll be all you and none of us being seen. Of course, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, get your Bibles. Make sure you have your Bibles so you can follow along with tonight's uh, class. And uh, Sister Liz is up next with Books of the Bible. Let's learn the books of the Bible, the books that you should know. Let's learn where they are, hide them in your heart. Let's yeah. learn the books of the Bible, books of the, Bible. the books that you should know. Let's That's learn right. where they are, hide them in your heart. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Say Joshua. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel. Second Kings, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah. Keep going. Esther, Job, and the Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. Oh, yeah. Boys and girls, welcome back to another Saturday Night Bible class. Today's lesson is going to be over the book of Deuteronomy. Let's get started. The book of Deuteronomy is the fifth book in the Old Testament under the division of law. It was written by Moses. It was written in 1400 B.C covering the time period of 1450 to 1400 BC and the Mosaic Law, which applied until shortly after the death of Christ, when the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. What is Deuteronomy known for? Well, in Deuteronomy, you'll find that it contains the death of Moses, as well as a repeat of the Ten Commandments that were first introduced in Exodus 20. Famous verses. In Deuteronomy, you'll find Deuteronomy 18.10, and it reads, There shall not be found among you or any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of time, or an enchanter, or a, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a Necromancer. Deuteronomy 34.10 states, And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Famous stories in Deuteronomy. The one and the most famous story that you're going to find in Deuteronomy is the death of Moses. important points to take away. The first point is that the book of Deuteronomy contains a repeat of all of the Mosaic laws. The Mosaic laws are known as the Ten Commandments. Plus, it also covers the death of Moses. 
It is the only book in the first five to record Moses' death. Point number two. The children who had left Egypt were adults when Deuteronomy was written. Moses spent a lot of time teaching and teaching and teaching them. They were quite ready to battle for the promised land. Deuteronomy repeats the laws in the other books, specifically directing it to this new generation who would be led by Joshua into the promised land. Praise the Lord, young people. I am Sister Citra, and tonight we'll be bringing forth to you tonight's memory verse. But first, let's pray. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you thanking you, Lord, for tonight. Thanking you, Lord, for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing with the ALBM chat. Uh, Lord, would you just undertake for the teachers that we may bring forth your word and that it may be un uh, the children may understand it and that they will apply it to their heart and lives. For it's in Jesus' name I pray and do give thanks. Amen. Okay, everyone, uh, let's go ahead and get our Bibles uh, because tonight, turn with me to Psalm chapter 127, verse 1a. All right, and we're going to read that together. And it's Psalm 127, 1a. Except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that build it. All right. Amen. Now we're going to go ahead and break that verse uh, down into parts. And we're going to have our address is Psalm 127, 1a. And it says, except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that build it. All right. Uh, once more, we're going to say that uh, all together. Psalm 127, 1a, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Amen. Amen. We're going to say it all together. Psalm 127, 1a, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. All right. Praise the Lord for God's word. Uh, praise the Lord that we were able to uh, bring that to you tonight. Boy, uh, young people, we pray that you all are able to watch the chat and that you all are able to get a blessing out of it. Um, and then uh, we also ask you to tune in next week as we have our, our next lesson coming up. Uh, and tonight we're going to have our lesson brought to you uh, by Brother Covian. So let's prepare our hearts from the for the word. He's going to be speaking about the Tower of Babel. Thank you. Praise the Lord, boys and girls. Brother Covian coming to you again with another Saturday message. Uh, this message is on the Tower of Babel, and it comes from the book of Genesis chapter 11, and it's going to be from verses 1 through 9. Um, I'm going to read our memory verse before I start talking and going through the lesson in that area of Scripture, because that's something very important that I want you to remember from your memory verse, which is that first part. And we'll read that after we have this word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come to you giving thanks and glory to you for today. To Heavenly Father, as we get into your word, I ask for your wisdom. I ask that I be hidden behind the cross to Heavenly Father and that you give me what to say and that we all understand it and that we use your word in our lives to Heavenly Father. We just thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. Please forgive us of our sins and cleanse us to Heavenly Father as we um, come into your presence. In Jesus' name I pray and give thanks. Amen. Now, Psalms 127, verse 1, and again, I'm just looking at the A part of that verse. It says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Okay, so let's just keep that in mind as we go through um, the story here. And I'm going to go through the story with you and, uh, you know, uh, keep you up on what the scriptures are that we're reading as well. So it's again, Genesis chapter 11, 
verses 1 through 9. But again, keep your mind on uh, Psalms 127, verse 1. Okay? And verse 1 reads, And the whole earth was of one language and one speech. Verse 2, And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Okay? And they said one to another, Go let us make brick and burn them freely. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to let us build us a city and a tower. So something very, very important is happening here. They're doing some building there, inhabiting land and they're building, but they're doing something very bad here, which is uh, the reason why the flood came and things like that. They're doing something very bad, which is they're leaving the Lord out. They're leaving God out. They're again going back to saying, what should we do? What can we do? How should we do us. this situation as opposed to, you know, uh, getting God involved? And uh, right there it says, and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one. And they have all one language. And this they began to do. Again, they did all this. They didn't talk to the Lord, didn't consult the Lord. So they're still not obeying him here. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So the Lord knows now anything they can think of to do because they're, you know, they all got the same language. They're communicating. They're doing these things without me. You know, there's nothing imaginable that they won't do. So verse 7 says, Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. In other words, they just stopped trying to build, because if you think about it, now all of a sudden they show up for work and working on building the tower, because it's not done yet. So they show up for work to start building the tower, and now everybody's speaking a different language, and hey, I need a tool, and you can't tell me um, how to get to the, you know, um, you can't tell me or understand what I'm asking you for. So everybody eventually just got frustrated since the languages were scattered, and you know what? They eventually just left off to build the city. Um, verse 9 says, Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So once again, they came here, and now they don't understand each other. They became Babel because they don't understand each other. You know, they're, they're confounded in their language. They don't understand each other. They don't know what to say. So what the Lord showed the people of Babel that day is that they couldn't, and no matter how smart they were or how good they were at building or doing anything, that they couldn't accomplish anything without obeying God and doing what he said and honoring him in what they do. So they left God out. They started talking about self. God was not included in what they were doing. They didn't communicate with him. They didn't seek his guidance. They just went forward and said, hey, build right here and build this tower. And it was all about them making a name for themselves. Um, so I think one of the things that we need to understand in our uh, reading and our study showed us that as we prepared for this lesson, it showed us, and I'm gonna, I want to read it exactly how it says it because I don't think I could say it any better. But it says how However good the work is that we are doing, and again, remember, this relates to us today, it will fail if God doesn't bless it. That's why we should always consult God in prayer that our plans will be according to his plans for our lives. So it's very important, uh, boys and girls, even for the grown-ups, that as we do things, as we move along in our lives, you know, God does show us things that he wants us to do. And what we need to do is be in prayer with him, and we need to be communicating with him so he can show us what things they are that he wants us to do. See, whenever we leave God out, it's going to fail. It's very important that what we do, that we involve God, that we keep him in the mix of the things that we're doing. Because ultimately, when we include God, and it doesn't matter what we do. I can speak for myself. I, I, I love basketball, and I enjoy the game of basketball. So as I launch out on different basketball missions and things that I do, I make sure that I include the Lord Jesus Christ as I do anything with basketball. So that's whatever your walk of life is, whatever things that you're doing, include the Lord. Make sure he's first. 
make sure he's involved so that he can bless the journey. And to that, we should all say amen. I hope I didn't confuse anybody with that message, but the point is that we need to consult God and that we need to keep him involved in the things that we are doing so that he can guide and direct our paths. So I thank the Lord for the lesson that he gave us today, and now we can close in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your word, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, all the way back to the creation, dear Heavenly Father, in the beginning of time, you're teaching us so much about life today, dear Heavenly Father, how important it is that we honor and obey you and that we consult you about the things that we want to do, dear Heavenly Father. So we thank you for how much you love us. Thank you for what you gave for us, dear Heavenly Father. And thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that ultimately, even all the way back to what we're learning in creation, it built up to what happened at Calvary, and we have a chance because uh, you sent Jesus to die for our sins. So we just thank you for what you're going to do. Ask what you undertake for the rest of the day. Ask you undertake for the boys and girls listening to this message, dear Heavenly Father, that they get something out of your word, dear Heavenly Father, and use it in their lives. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done. We give the rest of the day to you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, as we continue, um, I want to talk about something very, very important. Um, we have so much going on in our world right now, and uh, we just uh, had a message of uh, people who are listening to what Jesus has to say, who are sitting at his feet, um, you know, uh, his disciples, his children, people who know him and people who are getting to know him and hopefully saying yes to Jesus Christ. Um, but what if you haven't said yes to Jesus Christ yet? How do you establish a personal relationship with him? How do you know that when you leave this earth that you're going to go to heaven? Um, there's so many people afraid right now because of this pandemic that we have going on. Um, school has been canceled. Businesses are closed. People are stuck in their houses and uh, everybody's panicking. And uh, some, well, some people are panicking, not everybody, but some people are panicking because they're like, what's going on? You know, like, what do I do next? And they're afraid. But for the believer, um, these should be exciting times for us because I believe that God has once again slowed everything down so that we can all get our focus back on him. And this is also an opportunity for us to tell people about Jesus and how they can get to know him. So we'll talk about the way to heaven. Okay. Why did God give his son? It's because he loved the world so much. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So Jesus, be, Jesus came to the world. The Word became flesh. He lived. He died. And he did that for us so that we could be saved. That's why he gave his Son. He loved us so much. He didn't want us to die and go to hell. He wanted us to be with him. So then you may ask, well, well why do I need Jesus? What is my need for Jesus? Why do I need him? We need Jesus because we have sinned. I have sinned. Sometimes we sin by getting into fights. So many other things that we do. We disobey our parents. Um, um, our sin brings sadness. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, uh, Romans uh, 3.23 says. That's why we need Jesus, because we have sinned. Sin separates us from the love of God. There is a penalty for sin. If we don't accept Jesus, there's a penalty for sin. Sin must be punished. Read this line right here. Sin must be punished. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's found in Revelations 20, 15. And it says again, for the wages of sin is death. But, and thank God for this word, but right here, B-U-T. But <laughs> the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 6.23 is where that scripture is found. Okay? So what did Jesus do for you? What did Jesus do for me? He was punished in my place. He was punished in your place. Okay? He is not still dead. He is alive and he's in heaven. He took the punishment for our sins. 1 Corinthians 15.3-4 Part of for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? So what do I need to do? How do I accept this gift? How do I become a member of God's family? How does my name get written in the Lamb's book of life? How do I know that when he returns, I will be with him? Okay? For again, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He gives us a gift. The gift of God is to receive Jesus Christ. 
to accept salvation from Jesus Christ. That is how we establish it. That's how that is how we establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That is found in John chapter 1, verse 12. Okay? So we must receive God's gift. Do you want to receive God's gift today? Do you want to receive his gift? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, says Romans 10, 13. So there's a prayer that we need to pray if we want to be in the family of God. It's a very simple prayer that if we pray it and we mean it, we immediately be born into the family of God. And that prayer reads, and if you want to just pray it right now, you can bow your head, close your eyes right where you are, and just say this prayer right along with me. You can say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins and rose from the dead. Please come into my heart today. Come into my heart and life and save me. Help me to live for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, what you need to do now is uh, reach out to... You have just been born into the family of God, first of all. And now what you need to do is reach out to um, you know, your, your spiritual leaders here at the Abundant Life Bible Mission. Uh, the leadership in this group, um, you know, you can reach out now and we'll tell you how to become a disciple, how to build that relationship with Jesus Christ and continue to grow in his faith and grow in his love. And next thing you know, you'll be telling your friends about Jesus. You'll be telling other people how they can be saved and how they can have a relationship with God. And that is the most important thing, especially during these times right now. We don't know when the Lord is going to return. But a lot of biblical prophecy is being fulfilled right now with everything that's going on. It is being fulfilled and the Lord is coming back soon to take us where? To take us to heaven. So what you just learned was how to get there. And the way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for again for this time. Thank you for this class. Thank you for this message. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to still um, get online and share with the children. We ask that you to keep them engaged, keep them focused, help them to build upon what you've started teaching them, help them to draw closer and closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen.